back to my channel. Today is my uh, Disneyland review. So I get to share my thoughts, feelings, and kind of overall um, review of Disneyland. Not only will I be sharing my review with Disneyland, I'll also be kind of comparing it back to Disney World and like who does what better and, and if they could combine the two um, how awesome that would be. It's my last video for my Disneyland vacation vlog series. So it's sad because it's coming to an end. I like to relive my vacation uh, and as I share it with you. So it's coming to an end. This is the last one. It will go back to um, normal, if you want to call it normal. Um, so last one of the vlog series, so sad for that. Those of you who have just joined the channel, like in the last couple months, uh, my I don't have like a ton of content. I live a very boring life. I travel once every year, once every couple years, something like that. And I make vlogs out of it that last couple months. And then I go back to my unboxing videos, which in this case, I only have magic at your door, which is, I just got the email today, it should be coming. And um, every three months I have the Deadpool box. So my content will drastically lessen after this video. So hopefully you'll stick with me. Um, I will eventually go back to Disney. I just don't know when yet. I have a, a sort of cheat sheet list so I can remember what it is we even did because it's been, have slept since then, you know. I will warn that I didn't do very good this go around with receipts. Uh, my Disney World trip in January, I did a really good job with all the receipts. And this time I was just like, eh, I guess, you know, whatever, I guess. I, I don't know. I'm not sure what I did other than not keep hold of the receipts. So I'll tell you the prices of stuff um, that I can and then I'll do my best guesstimate um, for the stuff that I can. I'll start with the obvious, flying into the airport. We flew into Santa Ana. I think uh, it's under Orange County, but it's much closer to Anaheim than LA is. I think it's like a 20 minute drive or something. I will say we were, or we, I was a little disappointed um, at the fact that there's no shuttle. So when you get to the airport, there's no hotel shuttle from um, hotel or airport to hotel. We had to order an Uber to get there. And the, like the Uber pickup was insane. Uh, there were so many people clustered there. Uh, you couldn't tell which Uber was yours um, they were trying to pull in through the throng of people who were standing on the curb. Uh, someone would decide that that Uber was theirs and they'd dart out into traffic. I mean, it was, it was crazy. Um, it was insanity. So we were trying to find our Uber in the mass of cars and people and trying to get loaded so we could get here. Uh, I, I just don't travel anymore. Or I don't travel very well anymore. I feel, I think it's, um, like, it, long story short, long time ago, I don't even, we'll say 10 years ago, I got stuck, um, I got stranded at airport, Denver airport, for like 12 hours, and then the following year, almost to the day, I got stranded there again for like 14 hours, and it's, because of that, it's given me like high anxiety of getting to the airport, and getting on the flight and it makes me physically ill to get to the airport like once I get there and I'm on the on the plane I'm fine I I don't have any issues being on the plane uh, I do get car sick and stuff so I I can take Dramamine and I'm okay there but it messes my system up for like a day or two because I'm sick I'm I'm stressed out and my anxiety is real high upsets my stomach I have a headache um, I mean, I'm like really messed up for a couple days because I just, I feel terrible. So if I'm going to vacation, I'm miserable for the first couple days. So on top of trying to get an Uber and get through all these people and get loaded up in the car, um, usually when I start coming down off the anxiety because we're there, 
I couldn't come down off the anxiety because now we have to get to the hotel and it just it made it more stressful uh, at Disney World if you're staying on property you have the magic butt or magic shuttle or whatever it is to come get you and then they take you there so you don't even have to worry about it you don't have to worry about your luggage they get it for you like it's seamless and you enter the Disney bubble as soon as you hit the airport um, which I'll get to that here in a second so we stayed at Anaheim Portofino uh, Suite and Inn or something uh, or Inn and Suites so Anaheim Portofino Inn and Suites not impressed uh, it's it's a regular old uh, hotel um, I don't know if anyone noticed I'm sure you did I didn't actually record it I was actually that disappointed that I didn't record it I kind of regret it now but I don't in a way it's literally any any hotel that you come in to or you stay at that was the Pornofino uh, it looked really cool from the outside and then as soon as you walked into the room it looked like a sort of shabby rundown room I was under the impression that it was a Disney hotel and it's not I guess it's just near the the park I guess there are two uh, hotels like near there that is Disney and it's considered being on property and then they shuttle you back and forth um, I didn't realize that I thought all the hotels in that area were Disney hotels um, so if you're looking for a Disney Resort hotel near Disneyland Portofino is not one of them to get to the parks I went down to the front desk uh, asked where the free shuttle to the park was and she gave me a place to go um, which bus stop to go to because there's like three on um, there's three of them on four of the corners so out of four corners there were three bus stops so there are bus stops everywhere and uh, she gave me um, which bus stop to go to for the free shuttle and I said free shuttle to the park I don't know how many times and she's yeah free shuttle repeated it to me and I was like perfect all right thank you went back to the room got everybody we went down um, uh, this was the first day so Jesse wasn't there yet she flew in later uh, my mom Christopher and I essentially like chased buses from bus stop to bus stop trying to find the free shuttle and every bus that stopped we were like are you the free shuttle to the to Disney and they're like no there is no free shuttle and we're like oh the lady at the desk over there said there is one and then they're like well um, check the blue ones or whatever and then we waited and then got another and then finally it was we went into Walgreens or something and they 100% said there are no such thing as a free shuttle to Disney so it was four dollars per person to get in to the bus you would have had to pay both ways and it's a mile to walk um, so we ended up walking to get there again I didn't feel good I didn't want to walk I wanted to ride the bus um, also the thing with the Disney bubble if you've been to Disney World and you stayed on property the Disney bubble exists from the time you enter the airport you go over to um, you get checked in and all that for the Magic Express Disney bubble exists uh, there is no such thing as the Disney bubble in Disneyland unless I guess if you stay possibly if you stay at the actual Disneyland like resorts there was no bubble for us we encountered uh, a guy who was on something he's on drugs of some sort and he was out of his mind he ripped his shirt off he threw it on the ground he crouched and he was grunting and yelling at it he picked it up he wrapped it around his neck he was like aggressively lunging at people and I, I'm sorry but when I'm on vacation I, I want to be in a fantasy land I don't want to mess with real world problems I don't want to see real world problems so it was one of those like unpleasant intrusions into my fantasy world of Disney vacation and we saw that constantly I get that it's a problem but at the same time again I don't want to see it on my vacation also if you have little ones you know that's not something you want to expose them to you know trying to go to Disney so I 
it was just really hard to kind of get into the Disney mind frame when you're surrounded by real world problems like that. Uh, it was kind of disappointing, depressing, you know, anything along those lines just to get to the park. So we walked back and forth to the park every day. Um, so those were big negatives um, on my, I guess, end. Uh, the room ended up, like, it was shabby, but whatever, we were only there to sleep. Turned out to not be that big of a deal. For as expensive as it was, I would have wanted a little bit better, but at the same time, like, it is what it is. They do um, Disney World packages, or Disneyland packages. That's where they get people. Um, there was an IHOP right across the road. Unfortunately, being in California, you can't just jaywalk across. Uh, would have been super easy to do, so he had to go clear to the corner, across the street on the corner, and then all the way back. So a bit of backtracking, but it was conveniently right across the street. Uh, we ate at IHOP every single morning. I do have one receipt. Um, so I had like big omelets or whatever every day, and uh, they came out to be about $22. The omelet was huge though. We'd eat a really big breakfast, and then we wouldn't eat until really like mid-afternoon in the parks so we'd load up for breakfast and then be good for the rest of the day we might snack and do that but didn't really need a meal until later so the ihop was uh pretty awesome i will say right next to the hotel as well we had a cvs on one corner and then a walgreens right across from the other corner and that was perfect because uh, we stopped to buy sunscreen uh powerade uh, water, I think. I mean, we popped in there probably once every day, at least, I would say. So, it was conveniently located, even though there was no shuttle to get to the park. Uh, once you're in the park, the bubble did exist, you're in the park. Um, the lines were pretty quick getting through security, all that good stuff, so no big deal. Um, so the rides. We'll do rides first, and then I'll do food. Uh, so parades... Uh, we did Paint the Night twice. If you ever get the chance to do Paint the Night parade, do it. It was probably one of the best parades I've ever seen. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen a night parade, but I could have watched that every night if we had time to do it. Uh, it was so amazing. Uh, the It was visually stunning. And the music, the music there was amazing. I bought a CD trying to get some of the new stuff, but it's too new. They don't have CDs out with it right now. Um, I'll have to look for it later, but Paint the Night and the music, watch it. Like, it's amazing. Um, let's see. We did Pixar Play Parade. Uh, I didn't really enjoy it too much. Um, Again, that was the first day. I didn't feel very good. Uh, I don't actually think I went back and explained my comment in the video about it. I said something about how I would um, let you know what I thought about it later, or I'd say something about it later, and I never did. So we had kind of a rude lady like standing behind me, and she kept like my backpack was right behind me. And I'm in my own space. Uh, my backpack, I think, was actually uh, sitting right where I was sitting. I was standing right in front of where I was sitting down. So I have my backpack in my own space. I'm standing in my own space because we were really, like, jam-packed, encroached on. Um, there was no such thing as a personal bubble. So this woman was behind me, and she kept making, like, rude remarks. The lady that was behind me, um, like, kicked me with this kid. So she picked up her kid or grandkid, whoever it was, swung him, both feet square on my back. I turned around and she gave me a dirty look like I'm the one that hit the kid and then like plunked him down on my backpack. So I like moved my backpack and then um, he like almost tripped or something. He, instead of stopping and letting me move the backpack, he tried to walk all over my backpack. So I tried to move my backpack and he like kicked my arm or he like kicked my hand or something and he like kind of tripped but she still had a hold of him and then she started going off about how um, Disney was for kids and the adults needed to understand how um, if an adult puts a kid somewhere for them to see then they just need to accept it and blah da 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 da. 
So I edited that part out because I didn't want that negativity on my channel. Uh, my opinion on that, I'm an adult. I paid for my ticket. I'm a kid at heart. I went to Disney on my own dime to enjoy Disney. Uh, I didn't take any kids. So other adults need to understand that I'm there because I want to be. So the fact that she treated me so poorly because her kid or her grandkid needed a better seat, not really fair because I paid just like everybody else did. So I was really upset with how she was, she was talking to, I assume her daughter, but she was saying it loud enough because she was directing it me because she knew what she was doing was wrong, but I needed to understand as an adult this was for the kids. That park was made on our childhood. Yes, it's for kids, but it's also for kids at heart. So I, I really was trying, I was in a bad frame of mind for quite a while because I was really upset with just the way she treated me and I feel like I never would have been treated like that at Disney World and that's not the case. I know that there's people out there that have had that experience at Disney World. I just haven't um, had that experience yet so I I was just really upset because I, I didn't feel good and then I had that happen and uh, it was all I could do to say something to her and I was like nope I'm not I'm just gonna leave it like whatever moving on so I didn't enjoy the play parade at all because of what that woman like she shot down you know what I may have enjoyed otherwise so we didn't go back to see it a second time um, so I didn't get a chance to try again and enjoy it uh, I just remember it was short and then I was just steaming mad kind of the rest of the time uh, Phantasmic. There are no words. Uh, we watched it twice. It is my favorite show uh, in Disney World and it is, I liked Disney Land's version better than Disney World, which is mind-blowing because I love Disney World's version. Uh, Sorcerer Mickey is in Disney Land's version more. He's pretty much, I mean, he's the main character in it. In Disney World, you only see Sorcerer maybe like twice in the whole thing. Sorcerer is in the entire, like throughout the entire Fantasmic experience, the show at Disney World or Disneyland. It was amazing. Um, I, I can't even, and again, the music. It was EDM. I could listen to that soundtrack all day, all day. I, I mean, as soon as I heard Fantasmic the first time, I was like, I need a CD and I need it now. And we asked the cast member and I was like, do you know where we can get the music for Fantasmic and Paint the Night? And then he was like, oh wow, no one's really ever asked for that. And I was like, amazing, we need this. And then he thought it was funny and he directed us to Off the Page. And they had a CD, but it's the older version, not the newer version. Cause I, I guess it's only been maybe this year that they changed the music. Um, either way, they hit it out of the park. That is amazing. I just, <laughs> I can't, I could go, I could make a whole video on Disney music. Like, it's just awesome. Uh, Soren, we rode that three times. You can't go wrong with Soren. It's just a good, it's a good ride. Uh, if you do get motion sick, uh, if you're not too terribly sensitive and you can close your eyes and still be okay, ride it. Um, my, from Great Wall of China through the Egypt scene, my eyes are closed. I can't do that scene, or I can't do those two scenes. If you can, ride the ride, even with your eyes closed, do it. Uh, you still get the sounds, you still get the smells, like you'll still get the experience, you just may not be able to see it. And then work your way up until you can keep your eyes open. Uh, that's what I've been doing. Definitely worth it. Uh, Radiator Springs Racers. So this is a ride that Disney World doesn't have. Um, it was, it's fun. It is a good one. Uh, if you want to wait the crazy line and crazy wait times to keep your party together, then you can do that or you can hit the single rider line and you're on the ride in like 10 minutes. 
if that. I think we walked on and it took maybe, it was less than five minutes and it was like a 90 minute wait. Uh, definitely uh, recommend the single rider, especially if you don't mind getting pulled away from your uh, group. You might luck out and be in the same car as, your, as at least one person in your group, but you will be split up if you have a large group. Definitely worth it. Um, again, if you have motion sickness, it does go like when you do the racing part of it, you do kind of do the whip when you turn and the whip when you turn back. I do have, I didn't have trouble with it this time because we hadn't eaten yet. Um, the first time we rode it, I had trouble with it because I had eaten and then I didn't feel very good after I got off. Um, so it depends on how sensitive you are, I think, but definitely worth a ride if, if you're not sensitive to that stuff. It is, it's a good ride. Uh, it's a small world. We rode that twice. Uh, the facade is much larger and much better than Disney World's. Disney World is just a teeny tiny little like building that you walk into. Uh, there's an outside element to Disneyland that Disney World doesn't have that's pretty awesome. And Disneyland incorporates the characters into their homelands. And I think that's really awesome. Disney World doesn't do that at all. There's no Disney characters uh, in their small world. Let's see, Roger Rabbit's Toon Spin, or something like that. Uh, Toontown doesn't exist in Disney World. Toontown is a super picturesque, cute little place uh, in Disneyland. It was amazing. We didn't spend very much time there. Uh, maybe next time we'll spend more time there. I had to cut a lot of the footage for that because Jesse and I were cursing and giggling. Well, <laughs> I was cursing and Jesse and I were just giggling like mad because the car spins itself. So there's a wheel in the center and it just, it spins. It's the tune spin, whatever it's called. Like it's, that car spins itself through the whole thing. You can hold on to the wheel and force it to stay um, still and you won't spin. But Jessie had one hand with her camera vlogging the thing. So she had one hand on the wheel, non-dominant hand. I had a camera in this hand, non-dominant hand on the wheel and we're both non-dominant hand trying to hold the wheel from spinning and there are times in there in the ride that it like violently jerks and spins and you just wrench your wrist trying to keep a hold of it so there was a lot of ow 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 oh god ow 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 like throughout the ride so i had to cut a lot of that because nobody wants to listen to us gripe about not being able to keep the wheel shut or like from spinning we found it entertaining, but I didn't figure anyone else would. It's a good ride, so if you have both hands free and you don't want to spin, you can keep it from spinning. Uh, if you want to spin, go for it. Uh, you'll you'll spin. Uh, you'll definitely spin. You don't know what's going on because you're spinning so much you're missing the ride, but you're definitely going to spin. Uh, Mickey's Magical Map. Do it. It's a show. It's amazing. Uh, it's a, it's like a play almost, and it's so amazing. Uh, it's kind of the journey, of, it's Mickey's journey in becoming an apprentice, and then kind of everybody that follows through and his adventures as he's trying to finish the map, and then the where the magic takes him as he goes, uh, and like the encounters with other people amazing especially if you love sorcerer mickey this like again this park is had sorcerer everywhere we were shocked uh disney world has sorcerer almost nowhere disneyland he's he's in a lot of different things he's i wouldn't say everywhere but it seemed like he was everywhere especially compared to disney world jungle cruise we wrote it twice i recorded it zero times the first time we did it, uh, I was going to record and it became obvious very quickly that our skipper was not that great. Uh, I'm not going to record a bad cruise. Uh, as anyone who's ever rode it before knows, the skipper makes or breaks the ride and that first one was not a good one. Uh, it wasn't terrible, but just not the best that I've, I've been on. Um, the second ride, 
we uh, went in the evening time, so it was getting dark. It would have been hard to record anyway, and I we did it. We left in such a rush. I left the camera at the table, and it was an amazing ride. The skipper was amazing. Um, Jungle Cruise is actually different than uh, the one at Disney World. It was new and refreshing and their jokes about certain things were um, just different enough to make it seem like a different ride. So that was pretty refreshing and pretty amazing. Especially with the second skipper, she knocked that out of the ballpark and I wish that it would have been daylight or at least a little bit more light and I would have taken my camera because I would have recorded it and it would have been amazing. Uh, let's see, Pooh's Grand Adventure. So it's Winnie the Pooh. It's actually a darker, like when I say darker, I mean like there aren't as many lights in the ride. And because of it, for whatever reason, it's so much more vivid in Disneyland than at Disney World. We ran into that for all the dark rides. Um, they were so much more vivid. I, I don't know, like it was, the storyline's a little different in the Pooh uh, ride than at Disney World for as far as I can remember. Or maybe it was just done uh, a little bit better that made me think the rides were different. But if you've been on the, the Winnie the Pooh ride at Disney World, uh, but not at Disneyland, definitely give it a go because it's, the colors are uh, wonderful to see. It's. I feel like the one in Disney World like flies you through real fast and I, I felt like we were a bit slower, um, maybe a little more relaxed as we went through the one at Disneyland. So that was uh, really nice. Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. Uh, it's Jesse's favorite ride. It does not exist in Disney World. Um, I enjoyed it. It's definitely something to ride, uh, especially if you're mostly a Disney World uh, visitor and not a Disneyland, because then you'll have been on something that doesn't exist in Disney World. It was a good ride. I don't know if I'd ride it every single time. It's not my favorite ride like it is Jesse's, um, but I'd ride it again, maybe not record it or anything, but it would be something I'd do um, at least one more time and then maybe not after that. Uh, I'd have to see. I was a little distracted because we were laughing and I was recording. That one, you do zip through there pretty quick, I felt like, so that was a little distracting. Uh, Peter Pan's Flight. That's another dark ride that was so much more vivid. Uh, if you've been to the one in Disney World, it feels like you blink and you're off the ride. You wait in line for a really long time and then you blink and it's done. Disneyland, it's a, a long wait again, but it you slow, you're not, it's not quite a blink and you're done. Um, it's more like six blinks and you're done. It's a little longer. Also, they do a little bit more lights with the stars, a shooting star and, the, and a rainbow. The lights are just so much more vivid and it looks so much more beautiful going through there. Um, other than that, I think the rides are pretty well identical uh, storyline wise. It's just Disneyland's is better just because it, it seems to be more vivid because of the contrast between the light and the dark. It, they did such a, a good job with that. Uh, so if you don't mind the wait, definitely do that one. I, you might be able to do Max Pass with that, which I'll get to Max Pass here in a sec. Um, we did the Little Mermaid ride again, and I'm pretty sure that's, uh, it's pretty much an identical one to Disney World. Uh, we ride it every time, uh, we get it, uh, whether we're at Disney World or Disneyland. It's, it's a classic, it's a good one. Uh, Indiana Jones, we did that ride twice. Uh, Disney World doesn't have it. They have a Disney, or they have a, an Indiana Jones like experience or something at, um, I think it's like a, a stunt experience at Hollywood Studios, but it's not a ride. Um, I was not expecting that ride to be as crazy as it was. Uh, this one, there are warning signs all over. If you get motion sick, if you can't handle a bumpy ride, you need to be careful. I didn't see the warning sign until we were like almost at the Jeeps. So then it was one of those like, 
hopefully I can handle this. Like, eh, I guess we'll see. And then I spent most of the time, I think, yelling. It was, it was great. <laughs> uh, so great, we rode it a second time. Uh, it was, it was an intense ride. Uh, I don't do roller coasters, so that was probably the closest to a roller coaster that I would get to. And that's probably not even remotely close to what people who ride roller coasters would think of as a roller coaster. I'm a wimp, it's fine. Uh, Monsters, Inc. I think it's Mike and Soli to the rescue, something like that. It was a good ride. It goes through the storyline on Monsters, Inc. Um, Disney World has Monsters, Inc. Laugh Studio and I didn't like that at all when we did it. Um, I, I like the like origin story rides better, so I, I like this one way better than the one that Disney World has. Um, let's see, Friends Forever Fireworks. We didn't watch it on the castle um, where we watched the Fantasmic show. They projected the castle projections onto the water uh, just like they did through, like, like they would for Fantasmic, that kind of spray of water, they projected it onto that. So the fireworks were kind of like up and behind us, and then the projections were in front of us. Um, I enjoyed that actually a lot more than being like crammed in trying to watch it off the castle. I I thought that was worth staying there rather than trying to get you know a good spot to watch it off the castle. Uh, the castle is a lot smaller than Cinderella Castle, so it probably would have been a little bit harder to see with so many people like jammed around it, so that was nice. And the last ride that I have written on here, hopefully I got them all, we'll see. Uh, I, I don't remember, uh, we did so much, it was kind of insane. We were only there for four days in the park and we did so much stuff. So Pirates of the Caribbean. We rode that ride, I rode that ride seven times. Christopher rode that ride eight times. Uh, my mom rode it seven times. It is the best ride. I, like my absolute favorite ride is Haunted Mansion. And Disneyland had it shut down for its overlay for Christmas, the Nightmare Before Christmas overlay that they do um, during Halloween and Christmas. Um, didn't get to ride it during that time which was a little little sad. Uh, I was sad for that. But my second favorite ride is Pirates of the Caribbean. And, or maybe I'll say they're tied, you know, because they're pretty close together. Disneyland's version of Pirates of the Caribbean is my favorite ride. They did such a good job with it. It is awesome. Um, I feel like Disney World's version is too centered around the movies. Like when they got refurbed, they just did a lot with the movies. I feel like Disneyland, they incorporated the movies into it, but they kept a lot of the original ride. And that really like pulled it together and made it feel more authentic. And I, I just think that is so cool. And the visual stuff that was going on um, from the original stuff, I it blew me away. I can't even begin to say enough good things about it. Um, if you like the ride at Disney World, definitely give Disneyland's a try. If you don't like the one at Disney World, still give the one at Disneyland a try because it is so good. They did such a, an amazing job with it. I wish Disney World would get the one just like Disneyland because uh, if they did that, I feel like everybody at Disney World would love it so much more than the current ride. It, blew me out of the water. It was so amazing. Um, ride and show wise, I think that's all we did. <laughs> oh, that's it. We didn't do much. Uh, we did a ton of stuff. I think that's the highlights there. Um, overall, I wouldn't take it back. Like, I would like to go again. There's things that we didn't do. Uh, we prioritized. Um, we got all the rides that we knew we wanted to do. And then if we managed to get some of the other stuff in, then we scooted it in. Um, if we could take a little bit more time next time and get everything in, uh, it's actually a lot more doable to do Disneyland uh, in say like a week or so. You could hit every single ride, every single attraction, you know, whatever. Cause there's two parks and they're real close. You know, they're only, you know, 500 feet from each other. 
so much easier to do than Disney World where it's four massive parks and you know there you have to get on a bus to get to each one and, and all of that. So that was uh, super convenient because you could be over in one park and then decide you want to do something in the other park and then just run across real quick. It wasn't that big of a deal. Also Disney Springs was situated right in the center so you could hit all three of them and <laughs> you'd be done like it was just so very easy so conveniently placed so that was very well done um the max pass system i didn't like it uh i'm so used to the fast pass system for disney world it was really hard to use the max pass system uh you can only make one at a time and you can't make another one until you use the one that you have so the fast pass system you can make three a day and use them and then you might be able to get one extra one um the max pass i will say they're clever because there's like a uh, we'll say like a tracker almost in the in the ticket and the disneyland knows when you're in the park because it will have scanned your ticket because you have to scan the ticket going in so if you try to be slick and make a max pass from say your hotel it asks or it's like you're not in the park it won't allow you to make the max pass until you're in the park so it's sneaky and it's smart but it's super inconvenient because you have to be in the park so then you might have missed some good fast or max passes by then because you're not there um, for disney world you can make your fast passes like 60 days ahead of time and you can make all of them for your entire trip three a day 60 days ahead and that's so much more convenient than one at a time only when you're on park property um, you can't make another one until you've used the previous uh, it's just it was inconvenient i will say max pass included photo pass and it was only like 30 bucks photo pass alone at disney world is $150 but saying that there's significantly less um, photo pass photographers at Disneyland than there is at Disney World at Disney World you know you look down Main Street and you can see a dozen of them um, Disneyland you know you might see two or three of them just down Main Street uh, so you don't take near the amount of pictures you're taking pictures yourself but not with the photographers because there just aren't that many around so it made sense that it was so much more cheaper than the Disney World version because the photographers just aren't around I don't know if that was just time of year or if that's just always a thing I, I don't know um, okay so uh, food what did we eat? So I already said we ate at IHOP uh, every morning. Got a real big hearty breakfast that lasted us most of the day. Uh, it was anywhere from $22 to $25, depends on your amount of uh, like your tipping or whatever. I had an omelet every day and these omelets were massive. They were as big as my plate. Um, I, I had to stop myself from finishing it because I would be miserably full if I like forced myself to finish eating it. So they were very, very filling, um, very protein heavy. They were really, really good. And they kept me full for almost all the day. Uh, we ate at the Golden Horseshoe. And then the what was right next to it was the side stage. So it was kind of an offshoot of the Golden Horseshoe. Um, so at the Golden Horseshoe, we had like it's kind of a standard fare everywhere you there's really not much choice um we got chicken tenders and french fries and i think that was i think it was like 20 something dollars because i got the mug my root beer float with the uh, woody's boot mug so it was 20 something dollars um all together and i shared that with my mom to make sure that um it cut costs we um, did that quite often um, at the side stage it was I think it was like 10 or 12 dollars I got like two Powerades and a corn dog uh, the corn dogs delicious if you've never had a Disneyland corn dog it's a must 
it's a must eat. If I would have known about the corn dogs earlier, I probably would have eaten one of those every day. I didn't think we discovered the corn dogs until like the last day, which is super sad. Uh, let's see, the Plaza Inn character breakfast. I feel like this is a must do, especially if you like to meet characters. It's a buffet. Um, eat, you know, eat your fill, all you can eat buffet. Um, I'm real big with omelets. I love omelets. So I went to the omelet station, had a massive omelet made for me. Um, when I, you know, was super filling, all of that, uh, I recommend sitting outside. That's, you'll get the best um, character experiences outside because they can move around a little bit better out there instead of inside where it's a bit more congested. Um, we met our majority of our, our characters at the character breakfast. Uh, there just aren't that many places to meet characters. They're, they're what I would call wandering characters. You see them out and about, and then you see an entourage of people following them, uh, but they don't typically, like, stay in one spot like Disney World does, and then have a line, and then you meet them, take pictures, whatnot. We just didn't, um, get to meet very many characters that weren't at the character breakfast. So if you really like to meet characters like we do, I really uh, recommend the character breakfast. It was good food and it was a really good uh, experience. We ate at Flo's Cafe. I had a burger. It was super dry and just mediocre burger for a high-end burger price and it just it wasn't good. Uh, which that blew my mind. I had like a roast beef sandwich or something the last time and it was phenomenal and I was just so taken aback at how good the food was and I was so excited to eat there the second time because I'd remembered how good the food was and then the food just wasn't that great and I think my mom and Christopher kind of had the same experience that they were just like mm, it was a, a mediocre burger um, so I was a little disappointed with their menu change I don't know if it's a permanent menu change or if it just happened during the uh, Pixar Fest I'm not entirely sure but definitely give it a try uh, it's one that I, I would have recommended to anybody um, with the new menu. I think it just depends on time of year. Uh, smoke Jumpers. We ate there twice. Uh, their menu is kind of limited. If you're looking for a relatively cheap and fair, I guess, they had like a buffalo chicken sandwich. I, I wanted just a chicken sandwich and nobody had a chicken sandwich. Almost everybody had cheeseburgers and I didn't want a cheeseburger, I wanted a chicken sandwich. Um, we ended up eating their chicken tenders and their french fries, which were amazing. Uh, they were really good, crispy fries, crispy chicken, like it was good. And it didn't cost an arm and a leg. Uh, we split it between um, my mom and I. Um, I think I've got, yeah, I have, I do have a receipt for one of them. So we got... I bought two cups of water, which were free. Um, I did uh, two chicken strip baskets with fries and two vanilla shakes, which my mom wanted a shake and Christopher wanted a shake. I just drank the water. And that came out to 35.51. So that fed three people, $35. Not actually that bad for Disney fair. Uh, and it's good chicken, so uh, couldn't really complain there. Uh, Red Rose Tavern. So it is the Disney World version of Be Our Guest. And in some ways it's better because it is more low-key, maybe. It's not as fancy feeling sometimes. It's not as expensive um, a little bit. We had a burger and french fries and they do like a um like a garlic parmesan over the fries and the very first time i had it it was a perfect blend of fries garlic and parmesan um, this go around they were really heavy-handed with the garlic and parmesan so as soon as you grabbed it you could just you were overwhelmed with the smell of garlic it was a little bit too garlicky for me and i tend like, I like garlic, that's no big deal. The burger was delicious, but the fries were a little much because of all the garlic. 
Uh, Jesse likes the poutine and it smells delicious but I have a thing with mixing my food and having soggy fries in there. Um, I think next time I'm, I'm gonna bite the bullet and I'm gonna try it. She gave me a bite to try and it was delicious so I think I'm just gonna I'm gonna do that next time. So I, I would uh, definitely recommend that. Also, if as long as they're not out of it like they were when we were there, uh, the gray stuff. The gray stuff at Disney World shouldn't even exist. This, the gray stuff that Disneyland has should be the only gray stuff that either of those parks have. Um, the gray stuff at Disney World's a joke. Uh, there's no, it's like a, like a cheesecake with some gray mousse on the top of it. And there's, it's kind of a bland flavor. There's no flavor to it at all. The Disneyland version, there's like, I don't know, there's like a red velvet in there somewhere. Um, the mousse is really delicious. There's um, like cookies and cream, uh, like balls in the mousse. I mean, the flavors in that, that little thing is just insane. It's delicious. Um, we were super bummed when they said they were out of them for the night, so next time, I guess. Uh, let's see. Last, we ate at Boardwalk Pizza. Um, we were all really craving pizza for some weird reason, and we went into this, um, it was an indoor, like, buffet thing. This place was super expensive. One piece of pizza was like $9. An entire piece of pizza was $40. Um, just what's happening? Uh, here, I can get like four pizzas for that price. It's, it's just crazy how expensive it was. And it was not bad pizza, but it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't $9 good. Um, my mom and I shared a piece, which helped make up for the nine dollar price tag on there so um if you're looking for something quick and you don't care about the price like it's fine but a nine dollar piece of pizza was kind of hard to take in um i will give a warning for all the food locations going to california we went during a heat wave disneyland is not set up like disney world and what I mean by that is Disney World is prepared for heat because it gets super hot in Florida. So they have misters in the lines, they have shade built into the lines, they have shade built into the walkways. Um, there's shade in a lot of places. There's a lot of indoor eating. Um, there's more indoor eating than there is outdoor eating. There is outdoor eating, but you have to choose that. Most of it's indoor eating. Um, in Disneyland, it's almost the opposite. There's almost no shade. Um, I think I saw one line that had misters and there's almost no indoor eating. There's a very few amount, like Flo's Cafe has a little bit of indoor eating and Smoke Jumpers has a little bit of indoor eating. Uh, Red Rose Tavern has a little bit of indoor eating. Um, Boardwalk Pizza, outdoor eating only. Um, the Golden Horseshoe has a little bit of uh, indoor eating, but most of it's on the outside. So if you go at the wrong time, there's no seating and you're forced to go outside. Um, it's only bad when there's a heat wave. California weather, of course, is like in that area is nice. So they didn't account for really hot times because they don't usually get hot times. So it's, always, it's usually really nice to sit outside. People choose to sit outside. They don't need all the shade. They don't need the misters. They don't need that sort of preparation because it's not usually that bad. But when it is, there's nowhere to go. Um, the couple places that is air conditioned that you could sit, you walk in and there's no place to sit or stand because it's just swarmed with people taking refuge in there. Um, it was a little rough. I will say we drank lots of, of Powerade, lots of it. My first couple days I, I was drinking water. All of us were drinking water and we were just, it felt like we were doing nothing but drinking water and it didn't feel like it was helping any. And I kept eyeballing the Powerades as we were walking by and I think I finally was just like, no, you know what, I'm gonna buy a Powerade. And it was almost 
stupid how much better I felt when after I drank that one Powerade. Um, we drank so much Powerade to the point where we stopped at the CVS and bought a pack of Powerade so we could put it in our refrigerator in the in the hotel room and take them with us so we had to quit or we didn't have to buy the Powerades anymore. Um, I have a bunch of receipts for those. So to buy um, like them in the soda cups, two of them cost $7.98. Um, I bought two of them a lot of the time. Uh, so one of them is $3.99. So with tax it was $4.30. Uh, two of them with tax was $8.60. And yeah, so $3.99 for each of the Powerades when we went and got them at CVS and I think it was like six bucks for like a, I don't know, a 10 pack or whatever it was. And we guzzled Powerade like it was going out of style and we felt so much better. Um, it rehydrated us way better than the water did. So. If you ever are drinking water during the heat and it doesn't feel like it's doing anything, it's probably not. Switch over to Powerade or something. Powerade was a lifesaver. Uh, I believe that is everything. So overall, a good experience. Uh, there were some some bad things. I think the real, the only real like dark blot on the whole thing was the lady at the parade, and then uh, just me not feeling well. And I. I don't really know how to fix that. So overall, a great experience. I do want to go back. I want to go back for a little longer. Um, truly get into the park and, and uh, like knock all the stuff out. Um, and also go back when Haunted Mansion's up so I can get that ride in. Um, I'd also like to do Universal Studios so I can do the Harry Potter world on the West Coast. Since I've done it in Florida, I'd like to do it there too so I, I can see what the difference there is as well. So there, there's, you know, there's more stuff that can be done going there. And I, I would like to go back maybe during a non-Pixar Fest um, year so it's kind of like a, a regular time to go to see what the difference is and, and kind of get that experience. So that would be, I think that would be neat and I'd like to do that. But I think that's everything. Uh, let me know what you think. If you've been to Disneyland, you know, what's your pros and cons uh, for the parks? I, if, I can't really say which park wins because Disneyland wins in certain things and Disney World wins in other things. So. I am always going to go toward Disney World just because it's my heart park, if that makes sense. Um, if some of the things that were at Disneyland could be incorporated over into Disney World, Disney World would be the absolute most perfect park. Um, that's how I feel about it, but um, I'm glad we both have, or like I have the ability to do both because I, it makes me appreciate uh, Disney World more. And then going to Disney World makes me appreciate Disneyland. So I, I appreciate them um, for what they are. Even if certain pieces of them are kind of annoying uh, because it's not as seamless as Disney World or, or whatever. So uh, let me know which one your favorite park is. Have you been to both? Only one or the other? You know, let me know. Uh, if you've been to both, you know, what are your pros and cons with them? Which one do you like better? I, I would like to know. I... I can't pick like a favorite out of the two um, or I guess we'll say like overall review wise which one's better. Uh, I like the food choices at Disney World better save like a couple um, like restaurants and stuff at Disneyland but I think it's just because there's more choice at Disney World. Obviously Disney World is so much bigger so they're kind of hard to compare because while they're the same company they're not the same thing. Um, if that makes sense. I would like to hear your opinions on, on either park or both parks, uh, see if they jive with me. I think my biggest um, negative thing about Disneyland is the Disney bubble uh, and lack of it. Just simply because I want to go to Disney and be absolutely immersed 
in the Disney culture and that just doesn't exist at Disneyland. Um, maybe if I stayed at a resort um, hotel now that I know that the um, like the resort or the hotel we stayed at wasn't actually like a Disney hotel maybe the bubble does exist but only for certain hotels like I, I don't know that would be maybe an experiment for next time but um, that would probably be for this trip would be the biggest negative is there was no Disney bubble and it was definitely like noticeably missing I guess um, so let me know what you think do you agree with the Disney bubble um, be sure to like the video subscribe to the channel I'll see you guys in the next one